What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we're gonna be pulling a vacuum and then recharging the AC system in the Tesla. Yeah, if you remember in a previous video, the AC condenser was all busted in and we had to buy a new fan, so we got all that changed and we was able to save this plastic shroud. We just did a lot of plastic welding on it, but it's back to 100%. All right, so let's get started. All right, to properly do your AC, you're gonna need a vacuum pump, AC gauges, Freon, and the correct oil, and you're gonna need gloves and safety glasses. And you want gloves because you can get frostbite because the Freon is very cold. Yeah, no, to know the proper type of Freon and oil you have, normally you'd have a sticker somewhere here or on the hood, and apparently the Tesla doesn't have that sticker. But what Tesla does have is they give you access to all the manuals that the dealership uses. So it tells you exactly step by step. I think it's the new thing they just started doing. It's giving everyone free access to all of this. And normal cars usually take a PAG style oil, but the Tesla takes an ND11 because it's belt driven electric compressor. I mean, it's, a, it's an electric compressor versus belt driven. So it's, a, it's an ester base ND11. So it's very important that you don't mix those kind of oils because they're not compatible. So let's get everything hooked up and start pulling a vacuum. I know this job looks very overwhelming, but it's actually pretty simple. It's not much to it. And I'm gonna teach my 14 year old son how to do it and he's gonna do everything. So maybe after you watch this, you'll be fairly confident you can do it yourself. Now, if you did this at a shop, it would be over $300 to get them to pull a vacuum and recharge it, which they're not gonna do as good a job because they're only gonna pull a vacuum for five to 10 minutes because that's all the time they have. And you really have to pull a vacuum for 45 minutes to get all the air and moisture out of the lines which that's the most detrimental thing to this process. So you're able to take your time, make sure you don't have leaks, get all the air moisture out. So to buy all the equipment you need is well under $200. So you actually save money. Plus if you ever have to do any other work, you have all the stuff already. So we actually, we had an old AC gauge from Harbor Freight and all the knobs were busted off. We didn't have a vacuum pump. And this company, Vivo Home, saw our videos and they reached out to us and they sent us the vacuum pump and the new gauges. So we're extremely grateful to them to get all this. So let's get it all set up and start the vacuum process. All right, we got our gauges hung up. Now we have three lines. We have the low side, it's blue. We have the high side, is red. And then this yellow line is gonna be how we hook it up to our vacuum and that's how we're gonna recharge it. And then next, you locate uh, two ports. You can take the cap off that one. And then we have another one right here. And you'll notice that the, I call it Schrader valves. You notice that they're two different sizes. So this one's small and this one's pretty big. And you can't mix up these two ends. So if you want to try, I put the low on that one. You'll notice it won't fit. See, it won't so, fit. Yeah, now put the high side on it should snap right in place. Oh, and before you do that, you wanna make sure these are closed. Just double check those. And you wanna make sure these are closed. So the way that actually works, as you see in there is actually a, a Schrader valve. And then if you look in here, you see a pin. So after you get it on, then you, you'll screw this down and that pin actually pierces the Schrader valve. So that's how that works. So we get that set up, then we'll get the vacuum pump hooked up to the yellow line. All right, so we have all the lines connected. The low side is already open, so now I'm gonna open the high side and both of these. All right, if you get a new vacuum pump, you wanna make sure you put oil in it first. Vivo Home sends a, the correct oil. Just make sure you have it between a minimum and maximum. Add it through here. 
and this is actually the exhaust so we're going to take that off i just keep it for storage so dirt and stuff doesn't get in there so now we can turn the vacuum on and we'll wash the gauges make sure it pulls a vacuum and then give it 45 minutes all right so both of the gauges are at zero i'm going to turn on the pump and then you should see both of the needles go to the vacuum All right, you see both of them. This one's at minus 30 inches of mercury. They're both pulling vacuums perfectly. So now we're going to set a timer for 45 minutes and we'll come back and turn it off and then we'll let it sit to make sure we don't have a leak. All right, so we pulled a vacuum for 45 minutes and we turned it off and let it sit for an hour and the gauges did not go back to zero. So that lets us know there wasn't a leak in the system. So now we're going to turn the gauges off. All right, the next two things you have to know is how much oil to add and how much Freon. So we have this chart that tells us everything we need to know. Now, the Tesla has about 120 milliliters, I think, of oil in the system, but since our condenser busted and we only lost that and changed out to condenser, you don't lose all the oil in your whole system. So this chart tells us condenser, we need to add 20 milliliters of oil. So we'll add that into the yellow line and then we come here it tells us we need 640 to 680 grams of freon and these containers is 340 grams each so exactly two cans is 680 most cars go by ounces but tesla is metric but if you if yours took less You'd have to get a scale and you put it on a scale and you'd actually weigh it as you're sucking it down to get the exact amount. But we're going to lose a little bit when we purge and all that. So we should be fine. So we're going to start out, put this valve on. You want to unscrew it all the way. They have a needle that pierces this can. So we're going to screw this on. And then when we get our line on it, we'll screw this down and pierce the can and back the needle back out. So we get all this ready. We're gonna put 20 milliliters of oil in this syringe, and then we're gonna add it to this yellow line, and then put our Freon to it. All right, I don't really know a better way to do this, but I'm gonna use this syringe, and I'm gonna put 20 milliliters of oil in it. We're going to put this into the yellow line. Hopefully it'll drain in. Yeah, it's going in. It's slow. See if this is speeded up. All right, now we have our 20 milliliters of oil in this yellow line. We have our valve on here. And all these fittings are just finger tight. You don't want to wrench on it. So now we have to pierce the can. Now you have to back this back out. All right, hold the can. So next important thing is you want to purge this line. That's what this little valve is for. You don't want to point it at your face either. So you press this until you get Freon or whatever out. Getting some oil. All right, we got all the got all the air out. So now we want to put the AC on the car on. That way the compressor be on, and we want to open this slowly. We don't want to put a slug of liquid refrigerant to it. So let me go get the AC turned on. All right, we got the AC running. Now we're going to crack this valve in. 
And you can see in this little window, see it? All the Freon going through. We're just going to go real slow. You don't want to open it up all the way. And you're only going in through the low side, so you want to keep your high side off. We heard it kick on, so now we got pressure. So far, so good. So now we can come open a little more. Now the car AC will start pulling the rest of it in, so you can kind of give it a little shake. All right, so it looks like we're almost done. It's the car is like in its 30s right now, so it's really, really cold. So that's good. How much time do you think we have left? That's it. This can is empty. You hear the compressor running? Yeah. After we got about half of a can sucked in from the vacuum, then the compressor kicked on and it sucked the rest of the can in. But one thing I didn't know, you can't open the valve all the way. So once you pierce it, so you pierce the can and all you do is open it about that much then that if you go all the way it, it blocks it off it wouldn't let it go in so i had to figure that out and you just watch it in this window the freon just going through but that's it it's blowing super cold so this was a great success yeah the car is like very cold right the now the fan that we installed is under here on the condenser on the bottom is running so all that's working so we can take this off, we'll connect this to here, open up the high side, get our readings on both gauges, and just double check it all. All right, let's do it. All right, the car, it's a huge success. Everything came out great. We, um, it's kind of stuck. A great set from Vivo Home. Appreciate them sending it to us. Vacuum pump worked flawlessly. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned this, it even came with a, a little leak detector. So that way if you have a small leak on your car, you can figure out where it's at. So I'll put a link in the description. I'll put the one that we have and a, a cheaper model from Vivo Home. This is a four CFM pump. They make one a 3.5. I think it's a little bit cheaper so it all worked out great and um, appreciate you staying to the end watching this we're learning a whole nother skill and Tyler learned it too so hope it helps you and hope you not as uh, intimidated by doing AC work and we will see you next time